so you can't always go by feel on an air conditioning unit. Sometimes just because it feels cold doesn't mean that it's doing what it's supposed to do. Today I'm showing you a unit that was overcharged, how to tell uh, via the pressures and what to do Welcome to recover. Welcome back to Kung Fu Maintenance where I show you how to make the most likely repairs you'll need to make in your lifetime. If you'd like to get the latest videos, subscribe and then hit the little bell icon right up the subscribe button and it'll notify you of any new videos when they're released for you. Okay. Got an air conditioner not cooling. It's all about after hours. A lot of ACs going on a Saturday. Here's what it is, right? Let's see what's going on. See this one here. It's working. Anyway. Uh, it seems like it's maybe just a little uh we are well way hot so it's gonna be a little tricky yeah it's a little low not not very much low but very hot all right i'm gonna go check it inside make sure the door hatch isn't open and anything funny like that get it going get in there Mirror. 13 seer unit. Wow. Actually, that one's Way a high. 10 seer unit. It is running. All right. All right. Got my green light, got my cages, got my gloves. Got limited time as it's close to dark. But the unit's running and it's just fairly low on refrigerant. Oh, the fan motor just quit. Shoot. It's not good. Hopefully, I didn't throw the breaker inside. Uh, gosh darn it. Tough one. Uh, it was running. It seemed like it was low on the freeway. Oh, gosh. Well, it's brutal. I went and grabbed my refrigerant, but until I got up here, it's where we're at. Yeah, we got the disc back cold. Take a look here. We got. Unfortunately, I stocked my bag with a 40 slash five. I think this one's probably a 35 five. Pull the disconnect. So, uh, I mean, discharge the capacitor. It's a 35 five. Unfortunately, I don't think I have that. It's not a fan. It'll be a tricky one. It can't all be easy. Looks like a bulge on the capacitor as well. Get the capacitor quit. So, I'm gonna pour. I think I'm gonna pour. I'm gonna pour a little cold water down on the compressor, on the fan motor as well. So it's gonna drip down. Just at least start it off cooling. Oh my gosh. It's gonna be one of those, you know. Uh, but at least it's somewhat cooled off. It's about seven o'clock at night. I guess I'd rather take this than, you know. No one disconnected the heart stuff yet. That's strange. Unless that was me, <laughs> and I didn't realize what I was doing. I'll have to review the video footage and see that. I actually don't know. Uh, so, with the 
looking for a 35.5. Got a 45. I think a 35 off. I didn't have to get that. I had 40 slash 5 the other day. So I have a jumper wire from that. That'll be an easy way to do this. There's a 5. Here's a 35. That'll work. Um, which I didn't test that deal yet, so I guess we'll test it first. And we can test this hard start kit as well. So I've got a new hard start kit, so that's good. Uh, let's see what our deal's at here on the microfarad test. Obviously, I need a good capacitor in order to charge it if it is freon related. So, here's 0 0.09 and on the fan, 0 0.025 seems toast. You can see the bulge in it, it's gone, it's gone. Here's a 35. Looks like that's a good fit. I'll add the 5 as well. I'm going to put a new hard start kit because I see oil on the outside of this one. That's kind of rare. Go with a new one. I mean, I can test that one, but I, because of the oil on the outside, I go with the new one. Uh, set the start wire for easy testing in the future. There we go. And then Common. The common. In the fan, we're going to make a jumper wire for the common hard start kit and set up the butt for this deal. There we go. That's beautiful. I prefer like a red wire or something for the common, but it doesn't really. The air conditioner doesn't care about the color of the wire. So here's a 5, making the jumper wire for the common. Yeah. And then here's the fan start wire. And now we'll just anchor that in right there with the capacitor strap. Strap it in right here next to the hard start kit. Good. I'm going this way so it leans to the right instead because it'll have the cover sense. Hard start kit is insulated, the cover is not insulated, so this way the cover will sit right here. And we'll drop down. All right, we're ready to run. Uh, we don't know if we're going to be overheating or not. That's more cold water. Hopefully the fuel has not thrown the, the breaker inside. There's a good chance I'll go ahead and use the non-contact voltage detector and we'll see if we have current. Uh, we do. That's good. So it hasn't thrown that. We can test our fuses. See if it the fuses. Hopefully just the capacitors, you know, separated because of thermal overload. And it's a weird thing to hope for, but 
I was continuity testing the fuses. Hey. Oh, they're both good. Okay. They're still blazing hot, but we can test it out. We can see. It looks like just the capacitor failed. Hopefully got more of like a fan motor or anything like that. You know, again, it's possible thermal overload of the compressor. So we'll see. Here goes starting it up. Yeah. All right. Started right up. And now the question is going to be the refrigerant charge. So at least we started right up. It feels a little hot on the high side. It feels cool on the cool side, but just way hot on the high side which is how it was before so we're going to need to test our refrigerant levels better grade of gloves. Better gauges. We're at zero on both, so our gauges are zeroed. Side, but we haven't purged our center 
gauge, and that's because I haven't hooked up any refrigerant. I'm gonna. Looks like we're overcharged in this unit. charge we got too much refrigerant we're running at 150 and we're running 58 so I'll pull the, the deal and we'll pull it and uh, I'll recover the refrigerant okay I got my recovery tank is this unit is overcharged not sure what happened so here we go. Got my recovery tank. This one's for R22. Pick up my gauges. Just do this nice and slow. It's not real bad overcharged, but it's definitely overcharged. Here we go. I'm gonna open the low side. Go. And I'm going to open this side to purge. There we go. Okay. And now we can recover a refrigerant. I'm going to move this over a little bit so I'm not touching that. Not touching the wiring at all. Okay. And so now um, when we open the high side, We'll be purging or we'll be removing some of the liquid refrigerant into the can and we're going to bring it down. It's ambient plus 30 is what we're looking for. So this one's done by superheat, but ambient plus 30 is a good rule of thumb. Outside temperature is 109 degrees, so we should be at 139. We were at about 160. On the green so dial for R22. It up and then we'll recover just that little bit of refrigerant. See we're at climbing. Now you can tell we should be at about 40 on the low side. We're way high in temperature, so we're definitely overcharged. I mean the, the cold side line's nice and cold, but we're not at a good temperature at the evaporator coil because we're overcharged. So we're gonna Take some of this refrigerant. There we go. We've already purged on all our lines. Okay. And it won't take much. You can see how it's dropping already on the low side even. It's going to drop on both sides. That's what we're going to need to do in order to fix this one up. Or we're just going to do it a little bit at a time. Bring it down. See, it's coming down. We're at 55 already on the low side. or bringing some of that liquid back out. 
we want to be at about 139. Pretty dense, kind of warm on the top. Here's our old buckled dual capacitor. I just overcharged on this one. Now we're at 139. You can see our low side has dropped down to about 45, and that will probably continue to keep dropping. So what's happened with the refrigerant that high, it really couldn't shed that heat properly. With the, uh, the super heat was too high. Check, check my outside. Move off a little bit. It's nice out now. Big difference to when I got here. Right. Let's see what we're at now on the temperature. Still at 109. So now we're let's see where we're at. Yeah, 139. That's good. And we're at 45 on the temperature. We're all set there, nice and cold. You can see on the accumulator, we're drawn up to right here. It's great. We're looking good. The uh, capacitor is correct. We're all set there. Um, I need to locate my cake. You know, the other way to do this is to check superheat, which is technically the more accurate way, but ambient plus 30 is definitely a good rule of thumb on a capillary tube system. You can see we're at 39 almost 140. I can even take another another degree or so. Go ahead and do that. Because I like to see this around 40 on the north side. On this one, once we've got it where we like it, I'm actually going to recover that refrigerant into the... Well, we're going to need to take it a little lower if I want to recover the refrigerant back into the machine. Set it back into the tank. The tank won't have a suction pull on it, but the machine will have a suction pull on it. So I'm actually going to bring it down a bit more and then that way we can recover the refrigerant from the hose into that high side it looks like we're still a little high there we're at 141 now this takes a little time to get this correct so this one was just a little a little overcharged Stay with this a little bit. High side is very, very high, very hot.
Yeah, we're almost, we're right at 40 now. And we're right at 135. Take just a little bit more, and then I'll recover that refrigerant back. Give it a couple minutes. hot gas coming back to the unit. The high side is really hot. We're definitely removing a lot of heat from inside the, the dwelling, so that's good. The coils look pretty clean on the outside unit. The air filter inside look pretty clean. So I'm not sure what happened. I just think it uh, was overcharged and that's how I found it. So. We're looking really good there, we're at like 40, 42, and suction side it feels just at a guess around 60 degrees maybe 50 59 60 degrees 61 degrees and so if we were to separate that it looks like we got about 15 to 20 degrees of sub of, of superheat which is right where we want to be we're looking good here So I'm going to go ahead and detach using my glove hand to recover that refrigerant. I'll turn off the recovery tank here. Detach here. Should have used my glove hand for that. But that's okay. We're all set there. Yeah, detaching this time. I will use my gloved hand, especially on that high side. It's much more, much more dangerous. I'm just going to start it a little with my regular hand, and we'll detach this. There we go. Closed off good. side now, which is actually, there we go, that will feed the low side back in, and just slowly. We're just pulling that liquid refrigerant that's trapped in the high side and the and the middle hose back into the system. There we go. Now we're all set there, we can detach our hose and turn it away, we're good to go. The system was just a little overcharged. All right. 
all set there, put my covers back on. <laughs> and get my stuff off this roof. We're good to go. Very hot. quick search of my YouTube channel, you should find a bunch of different videos that will be helpful to your maintenance needs. Also there's links in the description below the videos to tools and parts used in the videos. Your words, your instructions, they set me free. The gift of your presence. 